Welcome to worship on this Mother's Day Sunday. We celebrate and rejoice in, the, in our risen Savior who calls us by name. This is the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Good morning and Happy Mother's Day. Um, what are you guys doing to celebrate Mother's Day? Maybe you are spending some time with your mom. Maybe you made her a card or helped pick a card out for her or flowers or something like that. Some of those things are things that, you know, we typically do to celebrate our moms on this special day. So when I got to thinking about that, a lot of times cards and different Mother's Day gifts say things like, I love you, Mom. And while mothers love, love, love to hear us tell them how much we love them, what they love even more is that we show them how much we love them. Did you know that love is an action word? Kind of like um, when we think about like running and jumping and different things like that. Those are things that you do. And actually, when we think about love, those are things that we do as well. So um, let's think about some things together that we can do to show our moms just how much we love them. Maybe you can help put away the dishes or do an extra chore without them having to ask us. Um, maybe you go up and give her a hug and tell her, you know, how much you love her without her expecting it. You just say sweet words to her. Um, maybe you are nice to your brothers and sisters and try to get along with them. Those are different ways that you can show your mom how much you love her. So when I got to thinking about that, it got me to thinking about, you know, that's kind of like what God did for us. And so God showed us as his children how much he loved us whenever he sent his son Jesus down to earth for us. So he sent his son down to earth for us. Remember Jesus lived on earth for a while and then he ultimately died on the cross to forgive us of our sins. So that was God, that's the ultimate sacrifice in which God showed us how much he loves us. Um... So that is what we're kind of called as Christians to do as well. We're called to, you know, show other people the love of God. Yes, we can tell them about it all day long and that's exciting and we want you to do that. But when you show people how much you love them and how much God loves them by doing some of those things that we just talked about. So being kind to people, um, helping someone out when they're going through a hard time, praying with people. Those are really, really big things in how we can show them how much Jesus loves them and how much we love them and so that is kind of what again we're called as Christians to do and it just really made me think 
about that when I was reflecting on what Mother's Day means. Um, just because, yes, mothers, they love to hear us tell them how much we love them, but even more, they love for us to show them how much we love them. And that's exactly what we should do as Christians, is show people just how much Jesus loves us. So let's go ahead and say a quick little prayer, if you'll bow your heads with me. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day in which we're able to gather and just really celebrate the gift that mothers are in our lives. God, we just pray that um, as we celebrate this day and then go through these next couple of weeks, God, that we are really able to take the time to show people just how much you love them and the sacrifice that you made for us in your loving, most precious name. Amen. And to wrap up, I would encourage you guys to really try to challenge yourself to come up with something that you can do either today or in the week to really show not only your moms, but other people just how much you love them. See you guys later. Make a clean sweep of malice and pretense, envy and hurtful talk, 
you've had a taste of God. Now, like infants at the breast, drink, drink deep of God's pure kindness. Then you'll grow up mature and whole in God. Welcome to the living stone, the source of life. The workman took one look and threw it out. God set it in place of honor. Present yourselves as building stones for the construction of a sanctuary vibrant with life, in which you'll serve as holy priests, offering Christ-approved lives up to God. The scripture provides precedent. Look, I'm setting a stone in Zion, a cornerstone in the place of honor. Whoever trusts in this stone as a foundation will never have cause to regret it. To you who trust him, he's a stone to be proud of. But to those who refuse to trust him, the stone the workmen threw out is now the chief foundation stone. For the for the untrusting, it's a trip, a stone to trip over, a boulder blocking the way. They trip and fall because they refuse to obey, just as predicted. But you are the ones chosen by God, chosen for the high calling of priestly work. The scripture comes from the book of John, chapter 14, verses 1 through 4. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Three trees stood high on a hillside. They were growing tall towards the sky. The first tree Wanted to, be a, wanted to be a mighty ship and carrying a king across the ocean. The second tree wanted to, be a, uh, wanted to hold the treasure of a king. The third tree wanted to be the tallest tree in the forest, stretching high to the sky, pointing to the heavens. One day, three ax bearers came and they were ready to chop down these three trees and say, they said, these are perfect trees. We need to take them with us. With three swells of their ax, they cut down each tree. The first woodsman said, I'm going to make this tree into a mighty ship. And he brought, he cut the tree into, into timbers and brought it with him to the shipyard. The second tree was cut down by the second woodsman and he took this, he took the lumber back to the castle to be made into a treasure chest. The third, uh, the third, the third tree was cut down, and this, uh, the third axeman said, "Well, I think this tree will do." Time went on, and and they uh, they brought the wood back to each of their respective places. But something unexpected happened. Happened. The first tree was instead of made was instead of being made into a mighty ship, was turned into a fishing boat. A small boat to sail on on the sea for some common fishermen. The second tree was dismayed when he, instead of being made into a treasure chest, he was made into a feed trough to feed animals every single day. These animal, the smelly animals, crowded around him to find feed. The third tree uh, was dismayed when he was just piled into a bunch of timber for for soldiers to to use. The first tree encountered an amazing moment when, uh, when he was turned in to this feed trough and it, one night a family came in. The, the wife had produced, had a baby, gave birth to a baby and as, as the couple was standing over the feed trough, the, the husband said, we need, uh, we need a proper place to put our baby for the night. And the mother said, this this is going to be the, the cradle for our baby as, as she laid him carefully into the straw in, in this manger. The, the first tree realized that he was holding something very special, 
holding the king that would that would bring light to the world. The second tree um, was still in dismay that he wasn't going to be a mighty ship and he was just there for common fishermen until there was that day when the fishermen went out on, on the lake and a, and a giant storm arose uh, on the sea and a man stood up in this common sailing fishing boat. He calmed the storm by saying, peace, be still. This tree knew that something was special was happening within him. He was seeing through, uh, through the storm with, with this one who would save this, uh, who would save people on the boat. The third tree was in dismay when he was one day yanked from the pile of timbers and he was he was fastened to a man by by ropes as he carried him as he carried the timbers all the way to a to a horrible scene with others to be crucified as he was nailed as the man was nailed to the tree he was lifted high up on a, up on a hill and this third tree knew that he was pointing the way to heaven and this this king was was with him showing him the way to something even greater than he was i love the story of the three trees it it changes our perspective it helps us to realize something in our life that god is working in us god is working with us god is making us into something that we find unexpected in our lives in our scripture passage for today we hear that jesus became in in the eyes a stone a living stone that was rejected he was he was crucified he was rejected the people in the world had a different understanding of who they believed jesus was going to be to be the messiah to be the mighty king he was ultimately rejected and Peter lifts up for us the idea that that Jesus came in an unexpected way he was the stone that the builders rejected the prophecy was fulfilled from the prophet Isaiah where Peter lifts up that Jesus is the one that was crucified he was unexpected and, G and God did something new and different that the world didn't understand, the world didn't, uh, the world didn't realize. But Jesus was that cornerstone that, that was rejected. As we, as we hear from, from Peter, that we should come to that living stone. How does that speak for us today? How does it speak for us this week that Jesus was rejected? We come to understand our own ex our own expectations that we have for ourselves. We have an ideal that that we try to achieve. We have an ideal that the world gives us of who we think we should be. But God says to us, "Look at my son and what I did through and with him." That Jesus came in an unexpected way. He was rejected according to the world standards and when we hear that message that takes our breath away and we say oh well maybe God has something different for me maybe God wants something different from me each of us can model our lives after that cornerstone that that God has for us that we can be something new and different and unexpected than than what the world understands and even what we understand for ourselves. What will we become in God's sight? From the passage for, uh, from 1 Peter for today, from this second chapter, we're hearing that message that God did something new with Jesus. And God is also doing something new and different with us. When he says, but you are a... A, a chosen people. You are a race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. 
We may be finding ourselves in, in a dark time, in a wandering time, in a, in a lost time where it defies our expectations. Who knew that we would be in this time? Who knew that we would be in this time of isolation and, and a pandemic time? But we have to realize that God is with us. God hasn't abandoned us and God is still seeking us out. His grace is still working in each of our lives to do something new and different, to do something unexpected than what we ever would have imagined. Have you listened to God over these weeks? We're in the seventh week of this time of, of isolation. Have you heard God speaking to you? What has God been telling you? Has God been, uh, has God been saying, oh, well, you only need to focus on what's ahead. But maybe God is speaking to your heart during this time and saying, what about now? What about the blessing of now? On this Mother's Day Sunday, when, when we are far from our mothers, when we, uh, when, we are, uh, when we are trying to remember them, when we're trying to reach out to them, I think God would want us to say that, uh, what are you embracing about here and now? We may, be, we may be separated, we may be isolated, we may be wondering, am I, am I teaching my children enough at, at home? Am I doing enough uh, to show them that, that I love them right here and now? Or is your focus only on what may be coming, on the end of the pandemic, on, uh, on hearing those messages of something's going to come later? But what about here? What about now? In front of the tree right next to me, I have a, I have a cornerstone that came from, my, uh, came from my wife's family's homestead, the house out in Hardesty, Oklahoma at the farm. It was the, it was the cornerstone of the house that was, that was built, part of, the, part of the legacy of faith and family that my wife still lives with and, and keeps with her. We move this cornerstone with us wherever we go as a, as a reminder of our connection to what was and carrying on that faith and that legacy with us. And we, we honor that. We bring her that with us and make it, make it something that we see and, and, and pay attention to every so often. And it reminds us of the foundation upon which we stand. We remember those mothers that built houses and built, made, a, made a home out of a house and passed on their faith to the next generation. Just as this cornerstone seems to be imperfect, it doesn't seem to be uh, crisp and, and clearly cut out, that's sometimes how we feel like our house should be. We feel like it's gotta meet an expectation, it's gotta be perfect, but, the, but God uses the imperfect, the, uh, the sometimes ugly foundations to build something beautiful, to make a loving home out of a, out of a house that's built with, with imperfections that, that may not be what we expected, but it turns out to be a loving place of safety, a loving place where, where God can shine the light of his love, shine the light of hope through the house that was built into a home where we can shine the light of God's marvelous light into a, into a dark world. It doesn't matter what decade you may find yourself living in. We all can remember those tough and difficult times. The foundation, the, uh, the, the house that 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 this cornerstone was, was built on for my wife's family was built during the Great Depression. They lived through difficult times, the Dust Bowl times out in, out in the panhandle of Oklahoma. They went through tough times in a similar way to difficult times that we may be going through now. But God says, I've chosen you. I've, I've, I've brought you to this point and to this moment 
for a purpose, to shine the light of my love into this world. And we can do that. We can accept that message, that, that challenge, that call on our, on our lives, because God first show, sh put his light into our lives, into our hearts for this time, for this moment. Each of us are enough. Each of us are perfect in God's sight. And that's not a, that's not a, that's not a perfection without, without, uh, without error, without fault. But it's an opportunity for us to be God's perfect love, to be loving as God first showed his love and forgiveness and grace to us. That different kind of perfection isn't according to the world's standards, but it's perfect in God's sight. Where we can be a part of his kingdom. All God asks for us is to be faithful, to be faithful and obey and to, and to walk with him each and every day, right here and right now. We have what we need from God to be enough for the moment. We may not always have the right words to say, we may not always have the right actions, but God is shaping us and making us into his people, into, into the people that he loves, the people that he knows. You have enough right now. We love the, the images of, of the Mother's Day video that, that you'll be seeing this morning as part of our part of our worship service with a beautiful song, with a, with a great message of how we are enough for here. We may not always think that we have the right message or the ways to teach and, and properly care for our children, but God says you are enough. The images of the mothers and, and daughters and their families are beautiful in God's sight. They, each of our mothers, each of our grandmothers, all of those in those pictures are people that God loves. We have to relish that. We have to say, that's amazing that God created each of those mothers and their families and called them good. Just as God first made this whole world and called it good. But we often let that sin and that and that selfishness and that that idea of we've got to meet the world standards. We let that message sink into our mind and our heart and, and disrupts anything that we might feel like we have going. But God says, listen to me. You are enough and you are loved and chosen by me. Allow God to build something on your life. Be the cornerstone that he calls you to be. A cornerstone for a loving family. A, co a cornerstone for loving relationships. Where you can shine the light of God's love into this world. You may feel rejected. You may feel like you can't live up. But God says, you are perfect in my sight. May this light of God's love sink into your heart for today. Let us pray. God, we thank you for your love and your light that shines into our heart. We may not have the perfect message. We may not have the perfect way of, of living our lives, but God says, I love you and I call you by my name. Allow, God, allow the light of God's love to shine into into each of our hearts. Allow us, Lord, to love you more deeply and follow you more closely and be the cornerstone that you call us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day 
our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen We worship God by giving back, by returning a portion of what he has first given to us back to him. I would encourage you to prayerfully consider uh, giving to the church through, uh, through a variety of, of ways. Prayerfully consider uh, sending, in your, uh, sending in your offering to the church office by mail or dropping it off in the, at, the, at the church office during business hours. Or you may uh, drop off your offering at the Gateway drive through Bank. We are again grateful for those that are supporting the work and ministry of, of, the, of our church during, during this time. We look forward to uh, how all the ways that God is working through the gifts that we share.
given enough for me, a gift that will last through eternity. Receive this benediction. Go knowing that you are more than enough and that God loves you and goes with you. Go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen.